You think you can make something this big and awesome without making a model first? Man, I feel bad for you. Hi, I'm Caroline Hambright. And this is Brighter Days. Every year I make a float for the Santa Barbara Summer Solstice Parade and this year is gonna be the best year ever. I am making a bubble blowing machine. Whether your parade float has moving parts like mine or doesn't, you still need to make a model first. You end up learning so much about the thing that you're making, your design ends up changing a lot. Okay, so what this basically means is you need to think about the way something has to work first before you think about what it looks like. So for my bubble blowing machine, I need a way to blow air. So I thought bellows. The bellows will be pulled up by a pulley and a rope over here, and they'll blow air through the nozzle, and on the other side of the nozzle is a rotating wheel with a bunch of bubble wands attached to it that will pass in front of the air nozzle they'll be operated by a crank. The bottom half of the bubble wand wheel will be submerged in a reservoir full of bubble liquid. And so those are all the functional things that I have to have. And I thought, who made this machine? Elves. Elves made this machine. So this whole thing is gonna look like it's in the forest. I actually started the whole process by making oh, yeah. the bellows. You can check that out in another video. <laughs> Does it work? Yes. And then I can make it 15 feet tall. Okay, calm down, past Caroline. All right, next step. If there are any materials that you're gonna be using that you've never used before, test them. For me, I needed to test the actual bubbles themselves. I had never made bubbles this big before, so we found a mixture on the internet and gave it a shot. I made a simple bubble wand using a coat hanger and some string, about the size that I want it for my parade float. It's so magical. We can make pretty good ones by just waving it around in the air. Yeah, yeah. And let me see if I can just blow on it and see what happens. But we needed to see how well they would hold together with air actually being blown through them. So we decided to do some more tests. That's a hairdryer. They seem to be holding up pretty well. In fact, it works so well that we're afraid even a little bit of wind will create a bubble before the wand even gets to the bellows. This is really important and we'll come back to that later, but first, let's start building. I'm not gonna show you my entire process, just some highlights where I learned some really interesting things and my design had to change. First of all, the reservoir that holds the bubble liquid. Here's my first attempt. It's kind of working, but it's also kind of leaking. I am dizzy. This is the second reservoir that I've made and it still leaks too and I put so much glue. What this tells me is if it's not working to put two pieces together and create a seal now, it's not gonna work when this is five feet long. So I need to make something that's just one piece. I mean, it works, but this thing is super dangerous and it was a total mess. This isn't gonna work either. I realized that I needed plenty of space around the wand wheel. Now, I did put these together. However, this time I'm using a liner. Yeah, I think that's gonna be the best thing to do. It has to be lined with something like a, like a tarp or Tyvek or something like that. So it'll just hold all of that water. And this is why we do this. This is why we make a model. So we can find these problems out now. Like if I was trying to do this on a large scale, the problems would be, you know, multiplied that much. Okay, so uh, this is my first model and it, it, and it works. See, you pull and... The problem here is, what does this look like to you? Because to me, gallows. It looks like gallows. It looks like hangman. Okay, and that's not cool. This reminds me of another time that I worked really, really hard to make a six foot long laser menorah and put it in my front yard for Hanukkah. And uh, some neighbors thought it looked like an oven and that we were anti-Semites. No problem, I redesigned. That's part of engineering. So I've got a simple lever here 
I've got a connection. I ended up having to round it so that it would work properly without getting jammed. Up here, there's a peg inside of there, so that piece moves as well. It's like patting your head and rubbing your tummy. The only thing I was worried about was I was afraid it was gonna be too heavy. So I added a counterweight and I put it on a tree. I don't think this looks like gallows anymore. More like something Wiley Coyote would think of. And that's just the direction I always wanna go in. So let's talk about this rule again for a second. What this really means is what something looks like has to be directly related to its actual function or what it has to do. So for example, I had to have something tall in the back to hold my pulleys up for the counterweight. Since that thing was already tall, I just turned it into a tree since this is going to be in the forest. And then I decided, well, I need another tree in the forest. There's already this lever here that's coming out of the ground. Why not turn it into a tree too? Earlier, I talked about how I need something to block these wands before they get to the bellows so air doesn't prematurely blow the bubbles. Since this area is so bulky already, I figured rocks. Rocks are in the forest too. And in fact, since there's already this bubble mixture here that looks like water, let's make the whole thing look like a rocky brook with a waterfall. That's where this water pump comes into play. Time to build a paper mache armature. Okay, this took a lot more paper and time and work than I wanted it to be, uh, which tells me a lot about the future. So that's just great. So I did two layers of paper mache. We have our like rocky area. Another thing I added was I put a, uh, some rocks over here and I put a rock back there. Um, I didn't want the only rocks to be just like at the front, like forests are full of rocks. So I put more rocks in places where people are not going to stand on the float, like back here, like that would definitely be an unsafe place to stand. So I put something in the way so you can't stand there. So that's really important to consider when you're making a parade float. Okay, so I've added to make these parts look a little bit more like the forest. This is like a tree that's been sawed down. So like here's the top and I made it part of the whole thing. So it's like this whole thing is made out of the forest. This other one, I combined the two back ones to make a big thing because um, I actually like to have a place on my float that my pushers and kids and volunteers and everyone who's like in the parade can put their stuff safely. I sprayed it with polyurethane so it'll be a little bit more watertight so that... Okay, here goes. Yes! So there it is, there you have it. I added some little flower decorations and safety rails wherever people are gonna be standing on the float. I am so happy with this, but just wait until this is 10 times as big. In the next few weeks, I'm gonna be packing up all these tools and taking them to our workshop downtown. I will be giving small video updates from there about what's going on, like the parts of the process. So subscribe and to see the crazy process of parade float building and making a machine giant. Bye for now.